We have indeed so very far from where they were and we had some impalas exploding in front of us and tracks and we've managed to find them and we're going to only have them probably for the next few minutes because they're about to cross into Torchwood. That's how far we've gone already. We're just south of Biffleshook Dam and they really have moved very far. I just want to let the guys know. Uh, you also, if you look at it on these Madash, they're about to cross into Torchwood um, from Central. So it seems as though they're going to go static now for a little bit. You can see they are moving slowly eastwards, so I'm going to try and stay with them, but at least they've slowed down a little bit. Go ahead, Greg. Sure, they can move these guys. AFM, Greg, they are moving straight east now um, on Central going towards the boundary. They haven't crossed just yet, so if somebody can get to Cheetah Cut Line quickly, we might still be able to, I can point you in the right direction. So I'm just trying to let the guys know because everybody's been trying to keep up with them and, well, as you can see, they just don't stop. And so carrying on trotting as they go and I was hoping to find their tracks and as soon as we saw those impalas running we knew that they must be here somewhere and so at least we've caught up with them a little bit and isn't this the best way to spend the morning it's I love when we have wild dogs because it just feels as though your adrenaline level goes through the roof as you race around trying to find them and then when you do find them again it is really quite special and you get feeling of accomplishment when you do find them because well it's difficult to find these three they're like needles in a haystack at times now hopefully they'll turn north up cheetah cut line and they'll allow us to view them for a little bit longer because they definitely are hunting they chase some impalas but they missed and it seems as though now they're just going to take a little bit easy i don't want to get too close to them because i want to get as much out of the sighting as we can and so if we can keep them from trotting and rather than walk then that will be better too but look at how they use those big ears so they go up on a ridge they look into ahead of them and big ears to listen can they hear some animals moving around and they'll be hunting diker impalas steenbok even young kudu young wildebeest young zebras so they have quite a wide variety of prey uh, prey items now B. Smithy, the three dogs are not going to be able to bring down as big an animal as a as the larger packs will. I have seen packs bringing down baby giraffe, baby wildebeest, um, even baby buffalo. Last year during the drought, the dogs were hunting buffalo, and I was talking to the guys in Timavati, and they were telling me that they even watched a pack of dogs hunt a fully grown buffalo bull. So that gives you an idea of how big they can. But these three dogs, they'll be probably hunting mostly the biggest item I would say they would bring down would be probably an adult male impala maybe if they're lucky a female kudu so that would be kind of rough sizing for them and it looks like they're just going to stop a little bit for us look scent marking so it's the two males in front by the looks of it and the female at the back if I've got it right I can't see 100% nicely actually it looks like the females in front and then the two males at the back now but look at the male scent marking over where the female did so that is right there's the female right in front and then the two males at the back and it doesn't look like she's pregnant it doesn't look as though they've mated with her Anna Marie you're asking if the two males would in this pack would fight over the female well they would have been some sort of competition over that female but once they've established a little hierarchy then they will be fine at least there's not too much competition you must understand in some of the packs the packs that are 20 dogs there's sometimes 10 different males in that pack that are fighting over the female and so you'll find that they establish their sort of hierarchy quite quickly and the male will have already been established as to which one is the more dominant one what is interesting is that this pack has been just these three for the last I would say a year and a half, maybe two years, and they still haven't bred yet. We still haven't seen any signs of her being pregnant. And so it's interesting just to kind of witness how this has been going on. They've obviously picked up a scent of something there because they're scent marking and sniffing around, which is fantastic news for us. I'm really quite happy that they've done that because it slowed them right down. So that's really good news. There we go, back onto the road. Look, noses down, smelling what's going on listening and they are beautiful i know a lot of people don't like them i find them to be very pretty i think they got all different markings and i really love spending time around the dogs i just want to let the guys know as well where i am um still haven't approached the boundary just yet we slowly mobile towards the cut line we're between the cut line and drakensberg at the moment A 
copy that. They've slowed right down now, so it looks like they're changing direction and coming back towards where I am. So just come down um, central. Ali, I don't think they smell a carcass. I think it's more that they probably, these three dogs have sent marked here before, and now they're just marking again. Or there are other dogs that have marked here before. But we know that there hasn't been any other dogs seen in this area for a long time, and so it must be where they've marked. I know that they were on this road about two weeks ago, and so they're probably picking up their own scent marking, and they just re marking their territory and just making sure that there's not any other dogs that have come in while they've been moving around. Now what is quite nice is you can see with the males, you see they get a little fluffy neck area and you'll find that that is quite interesting with the males. They tend to get a bulkier neck and almost like a little dewlap that forms as opposed to the females that get a much cleaner neck area. They don't have that fluff that tends to come out around the chin area. Yours go ahead. but they seem to be sniffing. Affirmative, that's the one. So they're just asking me about where we are. So they're just trying to find out. I'm just on the radio. Sorry, guys. It's uh, They seem to spend most of their time on the northern side, um, but you can go around. There's a two-track that goes all the way around. Now you can see they've just defecated on the road and this is typical of wild dogs when they're marking you see they all go to the toilet together now the other one in front on the front left has also gone to the toilet so there's another one and there that one as well so all three have defecated in the same place here and it looks like they're now going to go northwards which is fantastic news for us because it means we get to spend longer with the dogs this morning. And I always love watching the social interactions. And you'll find if the pack is big, all of them would have done the exact same thing. So when you come across big packs, they're actually quite easy to find because they leave a lot of telltale markers like this defecating on the road. So we've got three different piles of dung there now. So you can imagine when there's 20 of them, how many piles of dung you end up getting. I'm going to reverse back because they are starting to get mobile northwards again. And that means that we are going to go for a ride. Seb, are you ready? <laughs> Buckle up. Buckle up, exactly, because this does get quite rough and ready. No, I'm just trying to find a place to actually get in here so as to keep up with them. Um, I wonder if it's not going to be better just to go on the road parallel. I think it's quite far away, though. Ooh, Seb, I think this is going to be rough, but let's try it and see if we can't keep up with them. It's not going to be easy in here by any stretch of the imagination. There are a lot of fallen trees and well these dogs just move so fast that the chances of us keeping up with them through here is going to be slim but we shall try anyway at least we got a nice sighting out of them and they went static for us for a little bit watch on the left there Seb now we've lost our wild dogs briefly we're going to try and see if we can't find them again and let's go across to Byron who I think has also lost his big pachyderms